Alright, cool. So the movie begins, right? So Marlon's got this new crib, right? It's got like a thousand bedrooms. So they're swimming around the new house all excited when Coral goes outside. Follow me. Marlon swims after her. Oh no, the whole neighborhood has vanished. <gasps> Nemo's mom is staring into the eyes of a gigantic murder barracuda. So Marlon says, get back inside the house but she doesn't listen and the barracuda attacks forcing Nemo's dad to execute the five fin figure tag attack you die when Nemo's dad wakes up everything is gone his wife and all his baby children except for one anyway some time passes by and Nemo wakes up his dad first day of school first day of school so Nemo's dad takes him to the bus stop extremely paranoid about the big bad world and he won't let Nemo have any fun so the kids get onto this big flat fish right it's called a stingway daddy my baby is a genius so the other dads tell Marlon that the kids are gonna go have fun and Nemo's dad is like fun my son's gonna have fun with other kids how dare he Nemo no having fun is against your religion and Nemo says what every kid whispers to their overbearing religious parents so while Marlon is distracted, Nemo swims to touch the big butt. He swims and he swims, filled with determination and motivation to reach the boat while his dad screams, Don't touch the butt! And Nemo's like, I touch big butts and I cannot lie. Don't touch the butt. But while he's swimming back, he gets fished up by a huge human being. Oh no! Flash in his face. Nemo's dad is dazed as he swims after the boat. He swims and he swims, but it's too late! Nemo is gone never to be seen again. So Marlin is in a complete panic when he bumps into a forgetful fish named Dory. He asks her if she's seen a boat. Follow me! And they start swimming and swimming. Dory starts to panic because everywhere she goes, this crazy clownfish keeps following her. You got a problem, buddy? Huh? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? So Marlin's like, this crazy woman. And Dory tells her that she has a short-term memory loss. So Marlin leaves Dory. Hello. Mike. Name the Bruce. Alright, I understand. Why well, trust a shark, right? He eats them up. No, Daddy, he almost ate them. And then he goes, ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. He laughs in Australian. What you doing here, Mike? But Daddy, they're in the ocean. Where else are fish supposed to be? Interesting question, my child. So Bruce tells them, follow me, and invites them to a party with a bunch of other sharks. Marlon's terrified, but never judge a book by its cover because these are nice, friendly sharks. Fish are friends, not food. Exactly. So the little green fish quickly escapes the shark cult, and Bruce starts to pledge, and Dory goes up and says that she's never eaten a fish just like your daddy so while marlin gets his turn to speak he notices the diver's mask and tells him that his son was taken marlin and dory fight over the mask and dory gets hurt bruce smells the blood and he's like oh no bruce is going crazy chasing them through the ship left right center marlin and dory trap themselves inside of the room but this crackhead shark starts repeatedly banging his head against the steel door marlin and dory are trying to find a way to escape Stop it. Bruce is relentless. He'll stop it. Nothing. He chases them around the ship and into a torpedo launcher thingy. <gasps> How are they gonna get out, Daddy? Easy. Dory releases the torpedo and Bruce catches it and throws it away and it lands against the sea mine and boom. Oh, wow. Dory is awesome, Daddy. She can read and operate military equipment. Yes. So Nemo gets thrown into a fish tank and is freaking around because he's in a whole new environment. So Nemo accidentally triggers a box. <laughs> Nemo's panicking, terrified by absolutely everything. But fortunately for him, all the new fish like him. So the dentist shows Nemo that he's going to be Dala's new pet and Nemo panics and gets caught into a suction thingy and everyone tries to help but then comes out the big bad girl. You can do it. And teaches Nemo how to get himself out. Yay! Back in the ocean, Marlin wakes up and realizes they're in danger. He tries to wake Dory up. See, monkey has my money. The submarine comes crashing down while the mask falls to the bottom of a trench. And Marlon is mad at Dory for dropping the Mars. So Dory says to Marlon, Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Now they're deep in the trench and they cannot see anything. And Dory's like, ah! Are you my conscience? And they see a beautiful light and then they start playing with the light. I'm gonna get you. But when they finally see what it is, it's a big scary anglerfish. The anglerfish gives chase, but while they're swimming, they see the mask. Dory reads the mask while the anglerfish tries to eat Marlin. Daddy, if Dory's the only fish that can read, why do the other fish go to school? School. So Marlin fights the big, terrifying fish just as it's about to devour them. Marlin traps it in the mask. Oh, no eating here tonight. Dory. You're on a diet. 
and Dory remembers the address. Yes. So later that night, Frenchie says to Nemo, follow me, I am French. And Nemo gets invited to a welcoming ceremony. Nemo swims to the top of the bubble volcano to face his greatest challenge ever. He has to swim through. Bubbles get turned on. And with all the might and determination, Nemo swims through the bubbles. And then they call him Shark Bait. Shark Bait! He'll tell everyone his new plan to escape, but they're already kind of tired of his plans that never work out. But Gil has belief. So back in the ocean, Marlin tells Dory to go away, and the school of fish are like, This guy bothering you. So Dory asks for directions, and the fish tell her where to go, but with one important warning. So they get to the scary looking trench, and Marlin wants to swim over it, but Dory has a bad feeling, and she wants to swim through. Anyway, so they're swimming over the trench, and Dory sees a baby jelly. I shall call him Squishy, and he shall be mine, and he shall be my Squishy. And it zaps her, and Marlin kicks it away and then they get surrounded by the jellies yes marlin panics there's jellies everywhere but dory's bouncing on top of them wee, wee. she challenges marlin to a race now it's built for speed Phew, course, and rockers through the jellies and wins the race yay but oh no dory's nowhere to be seen so marlin goes back into the jellies to find her did she die no marlin found her so he grabs her and they swim through the jellies getting zapped left right did they die you're about to find out my child so we go back to the dentist's office where Shockbait is ready to escape. He jumps into the thingamajig and shoves a stone into the whatchamacallit. Success! But on his way out, the stone gets loose and Shockbait gets sucked back into the thingamajig. Did he die? No, the other fish worked as a team and rescued him. Shockbait is traumatized and Gil accepts defeat. Life trapped inside of a cage for human enjoyment forever. So we go back to the ocean where Marlin was saved by a turtle named Crush. <laughs> and he's like, first you were all like, whoa, and then we were like, whoa, and then you were like, whoa, taking on the jellies. You got serious thrill issues, dude. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Ooh. And then they go down this vortex. Uh -huh! Rogers! And when it's over, you ask Marlin, yeah. what brings you on this fine day to the EAC? Just before Marlin tells him about his adventure, he remembers Dory. Crush shows him where she is. Dory lays there, dead. No, daddy, she was playing hide and seek with the other baby turtles. <laughs> so Squirt gets thrown out of the current and Martin rushes to save him. Whoa, kill the motor, dude. Let us see what Squirt does flying solo. And Squirt comes back and he says, So totally rock, Squirt! So give me some fin. Noggin. Yeah. And then Marlin gets swarmed by the hatchlings. Did you die? Sorry, I was a little big on the details. So Marlin tells the hatchlings how Nemo was taken away by a diver and the crazy adventure they've been on battling sharks, anglerfish, jellyfish. The word gets around as the turtle tells fish and the fish tells the Will Smith fish and now the lobsters are talking about it. It's like wicked dark down there. You can't see a thing. How's it going, Bob? And then everybody's talking about it. So Nigel hears that Nemo's dad is on the way and he throws away the crab he was about to eat. So Sharkbait's depressed because he's about to die, but Nigel flies in to tell Sharkbait that his dad is on his way. He took on sharks and jellyfish and sea demons and a whale and Sharkbait can't believe it. His dad is a hero. He's so excited. Now he's motivated. He grabs a stone and jumps back into the pump and blocks it and everybody's like, yeah! So Gil tells everyone their plan is in motion and he tells Jacques to stop cleaning it. So we head back to the EAC where Marlon and Dory are about to make an exit. So Squirt gives them a rundown of the exit strategy, but I can't hear a word he's saying. Hey dog, get back at your head. And Squirt pushes them out. Crush points them in the right direction to Sydney, just as the baby Ninja Turtles land on his back and he's like, You tell your little dude I said hi, okay? And everybody says goodbye. It's so wholesome. And so now they're staring into the vast expanse of nothing and start swimming. So they've been swimming for a while and Marlon notices a speck he saw before and he goes into a panic. But they see a little fella. Come on, little fella. And it turns out to be a whale and Dory remembers that she can speak whale. Ooh, so the girls swim away. And the whale eats Marlon and Dory. Oh, no. So we go back to the fish tank and Jill's plan worked. It's absolutely 
filth. So the dentist walks in, cry kid. In shock, Bates is excited. He can't wait to see his dad, but he doesn't know that his dad is trapped inside of a whale and is desperately trying to get out. Dory speaks to the whale and the whale tells her it wants to root beer float. No, daddy, the whale said they must go to the back of the throat. So Marlin eventually trusts Dory and lets go and they fall and they fall and splash. The whale shoots them out of its spout and I told daddy the whale was taking them to Sydney. Yeah. So the next morning, the fish wake up, but oh no, the tank is clean thanks to the aquas come 2003. Ooh. The tropic gets fishing up again, but the fish band together and swim down and push the net out of the dentist's hand. Shark bait gets shoved into a bag and taken out of the tank. Shark bait starts swimming to the window and everybody's like, yay! You can do it, shark bait! Nope. So Marlon and Dory arrive at the harbor and they get eaten up by a pelican. Daddy, that's the fourth time something tried to eat them. Exactly. So now they're getting swallowed but Marlon's like, you die! Daddy, why don't all fish do this? Stupendous question, my child. So Nigel saves the pelican and they discover that this is the fish that's been looking for his son. What a coinky dink, Daddy. Out of all the birds in Sydney, they found the right one. Some things you just can't believe. So Marlon and Dory are suffocating and they're trying to get back into the water but they get stopped by the sky rats and he tells them Mine. jump in my mouth and follow me <gasps> they jump into his mouth but the crackhead sky rats give chase only to get trapped by a boat say yay <laughs> back at the dentist's office Darla sits down for a checkup i'm a piranha then amazon and her uncle gets up to give Darla a gift but when he gets there shark bait is dead no daddy he was just pretending yes. so instead of flushing him down the toilet the dentist decides to throw him away in the trash can in comes nigel with marlon and dory causing dwight shoot levels of chaos when marlon finally sees nemo dead and the dentist kicks them out Gil launches himself out of the tank and violently attacks Dala on the head and flips Shockbait down the sewers and into the ocean. So Nigel returns the dejected Marlin and Dory back to the ocean. Marlin, distraught, tells Dory, don't follow me and leaves Dory all by herself. She begs him not to leave but Marlin decides it's time to move on. But little does he know, Nemo's looking for him. Nemo bumps into Dory. I'm Nemo. Nemo? That's a nice name. So they're busy looking for dad and Dory sees it. Dory's going crazy. She cannot believe it. Your father. My father. <gasps> Finally. He kindly asks for direction. But daddy, how will they find Nemo's dad in such a huge ocean? Super barely. He's an inconvenience. Marlon is swimming and Nemo just shows up. Yay! They swim and swim towards each other. Finally, they're back together again. It's so beautiful. Nemo's dad tells him, daddy loves you. Oh no. Dory's caught in a fishing net. Never to be seen again. No, daddy. Nemo tells them to start swimming down. Keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. They keep swimming and swimming and finally the net breaks and everybody is free. But Nemo lays there dead. No, daddy. Nemo is okay. <laughs> Marlin tells Nemo he met a sea turtle and he was 150 years old. So they go back to the reef and Marlin is a cool dad now and all the other fish dads ask him if all those stories were true. Dory rocks up with the sharks and they remind everyone, fish are friends. No. And that's why your daddy doesn't eat seafood. I love you, daddy. I love you too, my child. 